Big dogs, defibrillators, and toned bodies. All this and more on this week's Last Looks. Hit the theme! Last Looks. We're talking about Last Looks. We're talking about Last Looks. No more looks after this. Yeah! Hello, my Birkenstock bank robbers and hair clip surgeons. I'm your ambulance driver, Paul Shear, and welcome to How Did This Get Made? Last Looks, where you get to voice your issues on ambulance, a.k.a. Ocean's 911. The tagline was courtesy of Vinod S. on our Discord. If you'd like to submit a tagline for our next movie, join our Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm. Coming up later in the show, Jason and I will chat about all the stuff that we are currently into. Plus, as always, we reveal next week's movie, and I will share an exclusive deleted scene from our ambulance episode. But first things first, a big shout out to AC Gravy. People, I love that intro song, and I would love to hear more intro songs. If you have a Last Looks episode theme song, send it to How Did This Get Made at Earwolf.com, but keep them short. 15 to 20 seconds is best. All right, people, let's get into it. Last week, we talked at length about ambulance. We had questions, and we might have even missed a few things. Here's your chance to set us straight. Fact check us, if you will. It is now time for corrections and omissions. It's corrections. Thank you, Todd Fronauer, for that great theme. I love Todd. All right, we're going to the Discord. Lizard writes, I am not a medical professional, but even with my single first aid class, I know you cannot use a defibrillator on someone without taking their shirt off, especially when it is likely it has metal parts on it, like a cop's vest. And if Cam had done this, she would have noticed the second bullet wound way earlier, which she probably should have figured out much earlier anyway, considering that he was bleeding like a can of tomato soup. Boom! Calling out Cam. You know what? She may be cool as a cucumber because maybe she doesn't actually understand how injured the people are. Maybe that's a different way of looking at it. She's not cool because she's seen it all. She's cool because she doesn't understand it all. Anyway, Thick Boy Water 2, uh... (laughs) thick thighs, writes Jake Gyllenhaal's assistant, who sprayed paint on the ambulance green, is played by the famous rapper Wale. Uh, And here's a short sample from his 2013 triple platinum single, Bad, featuring Tiara Thomas. Got a thing for a queen who don't want to leave. I ain't about to judge you, no one judge me. You ain't got to really sing about your rap sheet, because I heard you. Yeah, in the literal sense, I mean that. I love that. I mean, come on. Why wasn't he singing in this? He should have been singing uh, while he was <laughs> painting the van. A missed opportunity. Michael Bay. We should have had a video at the end, right? Like a, like a, the same way that we had that LL Cool J, My Hat's Like a Shark Fin, and Deep Blue Sea. We needed a, we needed a Wale song. Anyway, Unevolved Panda writes, I did some Michael Bay dog research, and according to a 2017 Variety article, Michael Bay has three dogs, all Mastiffs. His dog in the movie is named... Nitro Zeus, and he is named his other two dogs, Rebel and Bumblebee, after Transformer characters. So, Michael Bay is self-reverential all the way down. In 2016, after Bay read an article about a lonely dog named Freya, who nobody wanted to adopt because she had epilepsy, Bay decided to give Freya a cameo in the fifth Transformers movie as Anthony Hopkins' dog. Due to all the media publicity surrounding this, Freya was finally adopted by a family, thus I forgive Michael Bay for all of his movie-making faults because I discovered that he loves dogs. Well, there we go. All right, let's go to the phones. Scott from Toronto, what do you got? Hi, Paul. It's Scott. I'm a paramedic in the Toronto area. I wonder if, if any other paramedics or EMTs from the States called about the same issue. Uh, our ambulances have what's called a ABL, an automatic, automatic vehicle locator. It's a GPS system that shows who's closer to a particular call. That's how the dispatching center knows how to assign an ambulance to a particular call. I guess I haven't seen ambulance yet, but I think they must have just thrown that idea out the window. Love the show. Take care. Bye. Scott, you revealed yourself right at the end. You have not seen the movie, so you would know that they do rip out that GPS locator. And that is actually a big part of the movie, the GPS locators. Uh, So that is ripped out. So the movie is perfect, and I don't know why you're poking holes in it. Go back to being a paramedic and saving people's lives. (laughs) 
<laughs> uh, no, thank you for that, Scott. Um, okay, this is somebody who didn't leave a name. I'm going to call them anonymous, but not the people that are trying to take down Scientology, just a regular anonymous person. Hi, Paul. I just listened to the ambulance episode, and there was one thing you guys didn't mention that was driving me crazy for the whole movie. You did talk, you did ask what was their plan after the chase, but I'm wondering what was their plan originally for the bank robbery? I know they skip over the robbery and when they hold everyone hostage, so maybe we're just supposed to assume that they disabled the cameras, but they weren't wearing masks, and they seem like such idiots, so they probably didn't disable the cameras either. They weren't wearing gloves, their fingerprints are everywhere. I'm just wondering... What was their plan originally before the cop came in? How are they going to get away? How did Will think he was going to just go back to his wife? Right, bye. Well, that's a good question. I think the original heist plan was very simple. It was just like the heist plan from the movie Heat. So much so that I don't think they figured out much more than that. They're going to get a shitload of money and leave. Done. Done deal. And if no one came and no one busted them, they would have gone and gotten that money. But then the cops are also following the other bank heist people, but these were not the bank heist people. They would have been busted or they would not have been busted. I won't know because we don't need to go that far. All we need to know is that it was an homage to heat. And that was about as far as anyone thought about it. All right. Dr. Nans from New Jersey. Hey, Paul. Dr. Nans from New Jersey. Uh, comments on the ambulance. So the whole premise of the story is based on uh, the character's wife needing experimental surgery. However, in the real world, anytime you're involved in a clinical trial, or uh, some kind of experimental thing. Grant money pays for these. Insurance never pays for experimental treatments. Um, so the grant money at the hospital running the trial would be taking care of all the medical costs for the surgery. Uh, that's all. Love the show. Bye. Ooh, interesting. All right. Okay. That is good to know. <laughs> I don't know why it needed to be experimental. Why couldn't you just have regular surgery? Uh, but thank you, Dr. Nance. Two doctors so far, or a doctor and a paramedic. That's amazing. Okay. Um, finally, Travis from Connecticut. Hey, Paul. Travis calling from Connecticut with a what I consider a huge omission in your ambulance episode. Maybe it's not. Maybe this is just how California works. But at the 30-minute mark, right around there, uh, our protagonist, Cam, the EMT, and her partner are walking on the street and talking, and a guy with a beard wearing what I can only describe as the robes of a mad prophet go running past them at full tilt. There's absolutely no reaction from either them or anybody else around them. And at first I thought, maybe that guy's running from the gunfight, but he's actually running in the direction of the gunfight. So again, what's up with that guy? Is that just a thing that happens in California? And if so, cool, but weird, right? Thanks. Love the show. Love you guys. Keep it up. Hmm. This is interesting. I actually, let's just like, I, you know what? I want to throw it to all of you. What is going on with this bonkers bearded man who's oddly sprinting past paramedics? Um... Uh, we pulled a video of this moment, right? Um, we're going to put it up online. I mean, it is it is bizarre. I, I, I'm looking at it here, and this seems to me like Bayhem in the most uh, aggressive way. I think what he's kind of commenting on in a way is, yeah, Los Angeles is a crazy town, and there are a lot of unhoused people going <laughs> about their business, and it's so... Uh, it's so uh, normal here in Los Angeles that we don't even acknowledge it anymore. And maybe that's a statement uh, about uh, the homeless population here in L.A. And there are a lot of people who have a lot of money who don't like it and they just want to kind of get rid of them. And there's other people who want to do something that's a little bit deeper. So maybe Michael Bay is on that one side of like, just get him out of town because they're doing stuff like that. Maybe this is a social commentary, but I'll let you be the judge. Anyway, take a look at this video. We'll put it up on our Instagram and socials uh, so you can check it out. Back to the Discord Leslie Hu writes, I have a secondhand connection to ambulance. The doctor on the golf course with the blue shirt and the French accent is a real ER doctor named Dr. David Farsi. He practices in Miami and volunteers generously at the organization where I work. He got the role because he's friends with Michael Bay. He did not tell anyone in his professional life that he was going to be in the movie. One of his colleagues went to see ambulance in the theater with his family and almost fell out of his seat when he saw his friend and coworker looming large on the screen. Well, that's awesome, uh, Leslie. And you know what? Now I actually actually believe that this guy could maybe operate through uh, FaceTime. I believe that this is actually not unheard of, right? Or maybe I'm just thinking about another movie where there is a 
FaceTime going on. I don't know. Anyway, uh, continuing on the Discord, Dr. Guts 1003 writes, after helping the impaled girl, Cam invites her partner for enchiladas. So when we see them eating, why is he eating sushi? Okay, this I do understand because that place they go to is Grand Central Market in Los Angeles. They got everything. They got barbecue. They got sushi. They got bagels. They got it all. So she is getting enchiladas, but he can get whatever he wants. And that's the benefit of going to uh, Grand Central Market. You can kind of get whatever you want. You can get ice cream if you want. It's so uh, he wasn't enjoying what she was enjoying, but she was going to the enchilada place. Go to Egg Slut. He could have gone to Egg Slut which is a place. Anyway, so many great corrections and omissions this week, but there can only be one that is the best. And this week, the best goes to, you know who it is, Dr. Nans, Dr. Nans, Dr. Doctor, give me the news. You got a case of winning corrections and omissions. (laughs) I don't know. Uh, all right. Uh, you don't get anything. You know what? You do get something. You got me singing a song, and you're going to get another amazing song from Seth Chatfield. Hit it! Rose to the top to defeat all the others. You really honored your father and mother. You brought it all, and you went all in. And guess what, buddy? You win nothing. All right. Thank you, Seth. And thank you, uh... Dr. Nans for bringing the biggest plot hole into this movie. When I thought there couldn't be a bigger one, you found one, and we appreciate that. If you want to chime in with your own thoughts about the latest episode, hit up the Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm or call us at 619-PAUL-ASK. Coming up, Jason and I chat about all the things that we are currently into. We reveal next week's movie, and I will share a deleted scene from our ambulance episode. Stick around. Welcome back. You have likely noticed on How Did This Get Made that every Monday we've been pulling old How Did This Get Made episodes out of the vault and re-releasing them back into the rotation. This week's matinee Monday was Fast Five with Adam Scott. And keep checking out these replays of classic episodes every Monday. People, I'm improvising once a month with Jason Manzukis in our group called Dinosaur at Largo. You can come check us out. Just go to Largo-LA.com. Also... We are going to be doing some big shows at Largo uh, for the next couple of months. So check out the schedule. I think most of them are sold out. But every now and then we release a ticket or two the day of. So keep, uh, you know, keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. Keep on following us on social media to find out more. And before we get into just chat today, I wanted to just briefly talk about something. Um, For those of you who don't know, Lance Reddick uh, passed. And Lance Reddick phenomenal and John Wick, amazing in The Wire, um, just a fantastic actor and somebody that I became friendly with after he appeared on NTSF SDSUV and we pulled him in to do fun stuff and you see him on shows like Eric Andre and uh, of course Corporate, which I think he was so genius on. Anyway, um, we talked a bit about Lance in this Just Chat but we recorded it before he passed. So um, I just wanted to call attention to that um, and just take a moment to remember Lance. And if you only know him from, you know, things like The Wire or John Wick, I I highly recommend checking out Corporate. Um, He is so good in that. I, I also, I mean, I thought he was fantastic in NTSF where he played like this kind of crazed Guy Fieri character. He was so great. He came to the set with as many questions and thoughts as you might bring to a drama when he approached comedy. He was just a good, fun guy. Uh, We actually recorded um, Fast 9, The Fast and the Fura. It's um, a script written by Jordan Vandina, who wrote um, the Binge movies. Um, Also is writing that new Dennis Rodman movie. Um, And he came to play Tyrese and he just killed it. I just... Loved getting calls from him. I've talked about this on some other episodes of other shows I've been doing. And I just, I I miss the guy already. um, And I just want to send a lot of love to his family, his wife, Stephanie, and his children. And uh, with that, take a breath, think about Lance, send up some positive thoughts. And now, Rob from Long Island, play us into Just Chat.
Jason, all right. What, Here we go. What is going on? What is going on? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you were saying when we last spoke that you were busily catching up on all of the awards season yes. movies, um, which I remain very, um, very on the outs. I haven't yes. watched anything really, and it's terrible. But I have watched, <laughs> I have watched five seasons of Bosch in the last three weeks. <laughs> All right. You know what? You <laughs> mentioned this the other night and I was like, God damn it. I got to start watching Bosch because I know it's good. I know. And I know I'm going to get into it. And, and so tell me. It really is peak dad TV. Genuinely, like I know I promised you that I was going to start Breaking Bad. Yeah. Um, and I and I, I full blown have put it off. OK. I'm now into Bosch. How much um, more do you and have? It's great. I, I don't know. I think I have two more seasons. Um, It's it's it's. It's scratching that itch that Justified did, which is great and Reacher. Yeah. Just great, like, fastball down the middle, like, detective, detectives detecting. It's uh, it's really fun. It's really good. It is, I can't express this enough, humorless. And that is I my greatest difficulty it. with it, is that in moments where they're clearly, clearly would be levity there is none <laughs> like bosch is humorless okay and, and it's very funny i think i okay so i <laughs> i had this thing happen to me i was going to uh the upfronts the amazon upfronts and it was at carnegie hall and i had to do a bit with uh polar as a matter of fact so it was super yep. fun uh we were talking about twitch and um they bring me up to my dressing room and my dressing room says Paul Shear slash the cast of Bosch. Oh, whoa. So I was in this tiny rehearsal dressing room oh, for this is hours because awesome. they wouldn't let me leave, nor would they let them oh. leave with the cast of Bosch uh, Legacy. So it was sure, uh, sure. Uh, yes. so it's, this new, the new show. Yeah. But it was still all the Bosch guys. It was. Yeah. It was, was Lance the, Reddick there? Uh, Lance was not there because Lance okay. was on the. Sh uh, yeah. Lance was not there, but it was. Okay. Um, it was Jamie Hector. Was yes. Jamie Hector Jay there? Ti I, Dude, uh, Titus Jamie and I were yes. in the same room. Tidy. Uh, tidy. Tidy, 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 tidy and Welly. I. You tidy mean Tidy Welly? welly? Tidy Welly, um, uh, Mimi <laughs> Rogers, uh, and oh, then uh, Mimi Rogers is so good on the show. I mean, she's not in it a ton, but she is in some seasons. Actually, she is, but is she's so good. Titus Welliver Adams from Deadwood, my yeah. favorite, um, incredible. Lance Reddick is unreal in the I show. Love... Jamie Hector is phenomenal in the I show. I love Lance Reddick. Uh, Amy Aquino, incredible. Uh, everybody, the show is murderers. Well, let it's me, great. Let me say two things about this. Titus Welliver is fucking funny. Mm -hmm. Like we had a great, like, so he is a, a funny dude. Like, oh, yeah. so like the idea that he won't even like, or that the, the scripting does not just be in the books. It must, the character must be, it, it, it must be from the books that there aren't really jokes because there really is not, there is no levity and that's. That, but otherwise, I mean, it's it's you're gonna love it also because it's aggressively set in L.A. Oh, it I is can't like wait. it is uh, like truly shoehorning L.A. specifics constantly. He's constantly getting in like and out, Statham animal a... style. He'll he's stopping by El Compadre to get drinks with these guys. He's going to Shake Shack. He's going. He's oh, I it's love L.A. It. It's so funny. It's like when we did Ambulance with Roxanne Gay yeah. and we're talking about how many L.A., um, iconic L.A. landmarks we recognize well, in that movie. L.A. Like, Center Studios, like all, by that, the way, all it, that stuff. It, it's like our iconic uh, pitch that never has been made into a movie, uh, Jason Statham, Los Angelino, oh, okay. right? You know, just getting around <laughs> to get some Dupars. Um <laughs> oh, Dupars! Dupars is very heavily featured in Bosch. Oh, um, I won't say I won't say who, but there is a major a major murder that happens right out front of the Dupars in the Grove. Oh, like, whoa! Like assassins kill someone out at the farmers market at the Grove. It is it, Bosch is the. I'm just constantly being like, "Come on, Bosch! I, it's great!" I, like. Oh, it's great. I, and by the way, Lance Reddick, who I love, Lance Reddick, who I put in NTSF and it was and killed it. Todd Broker, the proud of Senior Dix. I know you are, Broker. And you and your goons, they're not welcome here. So get out. 
Yeah, I heard about you. So what? Big deal. I killed the dog and make a big federal case out of it. Everyone's done it. No, your bouncing skills, they're unmatched. I don't do that anymore. But you're doing it now. Right, but this is more of like a limited time special engagement thing, like a, like a McRib. Someone with the power to shoot off a man's head could come in very handy in the slow, fast food world. No. These hands will never remove another man's head. I promise myself and the people of Peter that. No. That's a word I don't like to hear. Just like hypoallergenic. I just realized something about Lance Reddick, who is, I think, an untapped comedy fucking genius. He is 60 years old, oh, which yeah. means when he was the fucking old guy on the wire, he was oh, yeah. 40. He was like, yes, he was young. Like he was the old guy. Like he was like, I feel like yeah. he was like the real superior. Like it's so crazy to me. No, no. He and uh, he is, I mean, just fantastic in this show. He he has both. He He gets to do incredible like detective uh 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 you know you know ball breaking on yeah. bosch he's ba- bosch's captain in chief um all that kind of stuff but then he has throughout the seasons this incredibly emotional storyline that is that he just destroys and is fantastic he it's is really great he's so good and you know i loved him in fringe that was a show that i i really loved and i think that fringe scratched for me that like x files lone gunman itch i never watched fringe it's good yeah. It's very good. I think they did a great job with it. I, I think it was like there are moments like the X Files where it kind of like lost its way at points, yeah. you know, like and they're and they follow the X Files formula. I feel like of, a lot of those network shows have that. The shows that had to do twenty two episodes a yes. season. I feel like a lot of those had like like slow periods or or where they seemed a little lost or whatever. And fringe it like the X Files, if you just want to enjoy it for the uh the actual like the legacy story yeah it's great uh and you can and you can just do that you can kind of take out all the extra episodes like you yeah, can get yeah, rid yeah. of those oh that's interesting um, okay cool by the way you're talking about you know we have a lot of stuff to watch we i know we have a lot of stuff oh, to yeah. watch uh you, first of all I'll, I'll say this you should be happy to know that i finally was able to introduce june to letter kenny spelling oh, how the episode was that? She liked it, and that was oh, a good. huge. That was a That's huge great. for me. And the only and you way said I, spelling bee episode, Adult yes, spelling bee? because great because you. I, I had asked you a while ago, what which one should be the starter, and and I trusted your opinion. June, and she gets into this on deep dive. Uh, she gets manicures in our bed, uh, sure. manicures and pedicures in our bed. So <laughs> and, and and oftentimes it's happening very late at night, like ten or eleven o'clock at night. Oh my god, bow is coming over. So I am trapped in a moment of like, if I need to get up early, like there's a man in my bedroom giving my wife a manicure and pedicure. But when I have her there, she has very little room. She knows how (laughs) she knows that I'm being put out so I can pick really what I want to watch. And that's when I was able to get letter Kenny on and she really enjoyed it. So, Oh, that's great. I need to go. I need to like find my next moment to do it, but we got one out. Um, Have you, have you guys tried, um, have you guys watched any of Poker Face, Natasha's yes, show? Yes, I, I watched the first two episodes, but I watch it alone. Uh, it's great. I really enjoy I'm, it. I'm, I think this is dynamite stuff. I, this I is really, really like it. Straight up my alley, like Columbo, Detective, you know, it, it, Columbo meets um, Incredible Hulk. Yes. She drifts from town to town great. solving cases. I love it. It's I great. love it. I Really, really fun. What I was going to say to you is what I found myself doing the other night was I was, you know, I was a little bit stuck for what I wanted to watch. I got into that that moment of like, oh, but I want to watch this and I want to watch this. And I get freaked out. And I said, tonight's the night I start Yellowstone. Oh, wow. And I put, Did you? I did. And Jason, oh. I did not know what this show was about. And I was oh, severely yeah. mistaken by what I assumed. And what, oh, have you watched it? Yeah. Holy shit. That, I haven't watched all of it. I haven't watched all of Yellowstone because they're up to, I think they're in like yeah, yeah, yeah. six I, I mean, I'll probably, you know? I'll, I'll probably slow it down. But the opening scene of the first episode, mm-hmm. and, and for those of you, this is not a spoiler because it literally is the first image of the first, like there's a, been a wreck on the road. Kevin Costner, little dinged up, uh, is talking to a horse, then takes his gun out and fucking blows the horse's brains out to, to you know, to save yeah. the horse from its suffering. And when I saw that, I was like, what? 
Yeah. This is the oh, yeah. show. Like, I was like, this is where we're starting. Oh, and yeah. then I saw the person who looks like June. And then I was like, holy shit. Then that becomes like secession. And then low income oh, yeah. housing it's and Native Americans like, are enemies. I'm like, what like are we up Midwest for? Sopranos succession. Wow. It's fun. And it's it's fun as hell, man. It's great. It really Get involved is. with Yellowstone. Again, just peak dad TV. You know, TV for dads by dads. I am. Um, I am. Kelly um, Riley, I'm. I think is fantastic. So I think um, every. I mean, uh, everybody. Costner's great. Everybody well, in Kelly the show. Kelly Riley. Is, just so you know, I'm constantly fielding compliments for Kelly Riley because. Oh, is that right? Because they all think it's June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's very funny. so people like I like I was talking to uh, somebody the other day, and they said, I just want to say like. Wow, like, congratulations uh, to June. She's doing so great. And I, you know, look, if someone's saying that to me, yeah, I accept, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I mean, it's amazing, right? And she's like, yeah, wow, we just love her on the show. And, and then I'm like, okay, <laughs> maybe it's Grace and Frankie, you know, I'm like, I'm like, like but it seems sure. like it's not in a way, too. I, I can't quite tell, like, the energy. And she's, like, she's such a badass. I'm like, okay, I still think <laughs> it may be Grace and Frankie. And she's like, and the success of it is just wild. I mean, it's like everyone's talking about it. I'm like, wow. And, and, and again, I don't know until they say, and what is it like with, you know, her and Kevin Cotter? I'm like, oh, oh, she's not <laughs> on Yellowstone. Holy uh, shit. And, uh, That's incredible. Yeah. So it is a uh, constant like and, and they, like they don't look exactly alike. It looks it almost looks like June wearing a wig. It, like, it looks like June doing yeah. a character it's a, and, and she's phenomenal on it. But I could tell how that's people funny. are confused. Oh, uh, that's a riot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's great, though. And I mean, and she's West great. Bentley's yes. great. Like everybody on the show is dynamite. I was and excited to see West Best. I mean, when... it gets pretty nuts as seasons go on. And that's a little bit when I started to kind of fall off of it. Okay, yeah. Um, but I want to get back into it because you I know that my... a lot of these spinoffs are really good. Well, McConaughey and I wanna... is coming in now for Kevin yeah, Costner. Yes, exactly. Which I also like. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, you know. <laughs> I have been, I did the opposite of, not the opposite, but similar to you on a night when I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to start something, you know, something yeah. that I've long thought of starting, but haven't. And am now deep into season one of Peaky Blinders. Peaky Ooh, Blinders. Peaky Blinders. Oh, them Peaky Blinders. <laughs> How is that? Um, fantastic. People love that show. Holy shit. Peaky Blinders is, and I don't know, I'm only in season one, so I don't, I hope it, it, it. Yeah, uh, 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 keep maintains this level of how good it is. Yeah, because it is dynamite in its first season. Incredible performances from literally everybody. Um, Killian Murphy, incredible. Another uh, June clone. Uh, Killian Murphy. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> if June got that haircut really buzzed on the sides, it would be pretty nuts. <laughs> Um, it's a great cast. It's a great show. It looks fantastic. It's a blast. It's got that anachronistic, um, same guy, Stephen Knight did, yeah. um, that show I talked about SAS rogue heroes. It's got that same, like, Nick, you know, Nick cave does a lot of the music for the show and it's, which is incredible. Um, it's a blast. It's uh, a blast. Well then, we oh, I was just about to mention the, we, cause we've talked about a lot of like the DC animated movies and yeah. stuff like that. There's one out for Catwoman called hunted. That is terrific. Oh, really? That's a great, it, I think it just recently came out. It feels, it's a very like solid, pulpy, noir crime story I, uh, that has, that feels a lot like it's inspired by the Ed Brubaker, Darwin Cook run on Catwoman in the comics. It's, it's, it's not one of those stories, but right, it's right. a very, it's a, a very similar type of story. It's great. Oh, I got to check that out. I just actually wrote uh, breaking news here. I wrote a uh, a Harley Catwoman uh, oh, cool. special comic uh, that's coming out in a couple oh, months. Oh, a book. Oh, that's uh, great. Uh, just like, a, yeah, like a little mini, it's a anthology book and yeah. uh, and it's a little uh, heist story. Uh, oh, and rad. I love that character. That's so fun. And uh, speaking of uh, DC, I thought the Valentine's Day special for Harlequin was really good. Fantastic. Fantastic. You know, I've been, that's one of those shows that I rewatch a lot, you know, just as I'll throw an yeah. episode on in the background. And that show is pound for pound, maybe the funniest show on television. It's it, really good. Except maybe for the now recently canceled Southside, one of my absolute oh, favorite dude, shows of the I last think bunch Southside of years. It's so funny. It's so funny. Just got canceled. Please let the people know that they should be watching Southside. And 
And just in case, let's also please everybody watch these other shows that I feel like need love, like This Fool. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, that show is incredible on FX. There's I, so many great I, shows that I, just I feel like are work, on that bubble. I just got to work with Bashir, who so funny. Uh, he's so good. And I was so psyched to kind of just, I kind of nerded out on him because he's just, it, it's, he's really funny. It was like, really, oh, yeah. yeah, he's really, really great. And I liked his other uh, show that he did. Sherman uh, Sh- Showcase. Yeah, Sherman Showcase. Also great. Yeah. Also great. He was great in Top Gun Maverick. Yes. He's fucking yes. fantastic, man. So fun. He's funny in this movie that we are in. Um, I guess we kind of play enemies. I mean, I don't even oh, know. Fun. Yeah, I mean, r- loosely. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's really, really funny. But, like, a, what a great like energy. And yeah, I love that stuff. I mean, the, how can we ever catch up? And I think the people are probably furious at you that in all these series that you're starting, that that Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul not on that I know, list. Not have but missed. I am also deep into Doctor Who for people who were yeah, interested well, I mean, in hearing my journey through Doctor Who. I'm like so heavy into Doctor Who. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I'm so, I'm furious and and will offer apologies, genuine apologies to everyone who's been saying watch Doctor Who to me for the better portion of a decade. Um, because you're right. I do love it. It's great. Um, I'm obsessed. So uh, that uh, I will happily talk about at some point if we want. I want you to have a, a proper partner for that because I feel like I can't. Uh, I, I would Ugh. like to join you at one point, but there's so much. I, you I know, know. You know what I'm excited about to check out right now? And I feel like everybody has been going uh, back to it is Party Down. The new season just oh, came yeah. out. And uh and I and I'm so excited to see what they do with this. I'm actually wanting to save it a little bit. Um, oh sure, you know because well, it's it's yeah. hard when things are all out at once because I sometimes will be like, well, let me try and just watch one, and yeah. then I'll watch another one in a couple of days or something. Try because I for some shows. I want it to last. I, yeah. I don't want to just like blaze through in a weekend all the episodes of Poker Face. I'm glad that they're forcing me to watch it week to week or whatever. I take my time on that kind of stuff. Like I, I literally watch, I watch those first two episodes of Poker Face in one night. And I was like, okay, now I'm going to stop for a couple of months and I'll go back. Yeah. Or I'll go because it's like it, it goes by too fast. Yeah. Uh, there's a great show. We just spent um, a couple of days doing comedy in Telluride, Colorado. With the hilarious uh, Tim Baltz, oh, who him. is just so, so funny. You might know him. He's on Eastbound and Down. Uh, he plays Edie Patterson's husband on, on that show. The, one of the great comedy pairings that's on TV right now. Yeah. But he did a show a number of years ago for CISO, the now defunct yes. network CISO. This show has now found its way onto Peacock. It is called Shrink. And it is not Jason Siegel's show Shrinking. It is Shrink on Peacock, and it is super so funny. It's funny. only one season. I think it's eight episodes. It's a blast. It's all, it's a huge swath of great, like, comedy performers from Chicago and L.A. Super funny. Great, great show. And you can just crush the whole thing. It's, he's really, really good. He's he's one of those guys who, if you listen to Comedy Bang Bang. Oh, I said, <laughs> thank you, Molly. I said Eastbound. Uh, oh. And it, it, I mean Righteous Gemstones, obviously. And Righteous Not Gemstones, we talked about that here on the show. Like that oh, yeah, show it's is one so of my good. Favorite shows. I can't wait for this. I said to him, I said, you know, I'm so excited to, you know, to see where you guys go, but I'm also like I'm scared because yeah. the show is getting darker and it started oh, yeah. pretty dark. And uh and he was like he's like there are nights where I would go home and I would be in bed and be like did I say that? Like, you know, like, and, and, and I'm like, so that makes me very excited for more Righteous yeah. Dem Sons. He also has a podcast called Hey Randy. That's what? on That's on CBB World. Okay. If people aren't on CBB World, they are missing out on some truly iconic podcasting. Um, hey Randy, incredible. Uh, Lily Sullivan's podcast, This Book Changed My Life, is incredible. Um, Seth Morris is, this is when I'm biased because I'm on a lot of the episodes. The Bob Duca podcast, uh, is just a full throttle with Bob Duca is some of the pound for pound funniest stuff I've ever heard. Um, it's, it's, it, Seth is doing like next level stuff. Um, Seth and Aaron Whitehead have a show, uh, that's called College Town. There's just a lot of great stuff on that. Um, I don't know. It's not a Patreon, but whatever that 
whatever that CBB world ecosystem is, there's a ton of great content in there. Um, but Tim and Lily's podcasts, I will specifically single out again. We were just with them in Telluride and did a bunch of hilarious shows. Their podcasts are fucking hysterical. I love it. And I pitched, I pitched this podcast, uh, when we were on stage, uh, and I want to give it a better pitch here, which is Valley Heat, which is uh, oh, yeah. hosted by Doug Duguay, who's a freelance insurance adjuster uh, trying to figure out who's using his garbage can as a way to distribute drugs. And it all <laughs> takes place in the neighborhood of Rancho Equestrian District in Burbank. And it is a com- I mean, I, 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 I'm not going to. I'll blow it because whatever. But it's a it is a comedy podcast, but it is yeah. impossible to figure out who like who this guy is uh <laughs> because he hides his identity so well it's so funny uh oh, and it is there if you there's all i say is listen to the first two episodes if you're not into it by the first two episodes well then you know then you're not gonna love it but i guarantee you when by the time you get to the advertiser that is advertising um uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you call that? Uh, frisbee golf? Uh, the frisbee golf advertiser in, in, in episode two. Summer's here, and that means frisbee golf is here. I don't know if you've tried frisbee or playing golf, but you put those two things together and you have a great summer activity. All you need is 18 of those chain net catchers, a frisbee, a few friends to play with, and anywhere between 150 to 200 acres, and you can play an amazing game of frisbee golf. And why just play frisbee golf when you can run your own frisbee golf course? Oh, I see. This is an ad for actually building your own Frisbee golf course and making it available to the public. If you are the owner of anywhere between 150 to 365 acres of forest or flatland, you can start your own Frisbee golf course. If you're not on board by that. Oh, funny. Check out. But that that made me. Okay, I, good. I, gotta, I felt like I, I had to pull to over this, to the side you brought of the it up road. Recently. Yeah. yeah. It's and really, really it fun. Out. And that was given to me by uh, Seth Morris. Yeah. And, same. you know, who, uh, you know, again, uh, a huge fan of good uh, characters and podcasts. So uh, there it is. Jason, I feel like we, we got a lot of stuff out there. People are now overwhelmed. Yeah. And uh, but I always a pleasure to chat with you. And let's uh, let's do it again real soon. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Jason, for just chatting with me. And to all you singer-songwriters out there, remember, we're always accepting new theme songs for Just Chat and Last Looks. Send them to How Did This Get Made at Earwolf.com. Now that we got Ambulance out of the way, let's talk about next week's movie. We are going from tons of drone shots to tons of Stallone shots. <laughs> That's right. Next week, we are watching the 1994 action thriller, The Specialist, starring Sylvester Stallone and Sharon Stone. Oh boy, I cannot wait. This will be Sly's ninth How Did This Get Made movie appearance. Here is a short breakdown of the plot. A woman entices a bomb expert she's involved with into destroying the mafia that killed her family. Oh, you got to take down the mafia with bombs. Rotten Tomato gives this film a 10% score on the tomato meter. And Hal Hinson from the Washington Post says, with all the preening, posing, and stretching, it's hard to know if the specialist is an action movie or an exercise video. Boom! Anyway, take a listen to the trailer. The government taught him to kill. Where it is. You're the best. Now he's using his skills to help one woman seek revenge against the men who killed her family. You think the killing is going to make everything all right? Something has to. Find it! Come on! It's my problem now and I'm theirs. Close your heart in my hand. Sylvester Stallone. Sharon Stone. The Specialist. Rated R. You can rent The Specialist on Apple TV, Prime Video, YouTube, or Google Play. I encourage you to check out Hoopla or Canopy, which are digital media services offered by your local public library that allow you to consume movies, music, audiobooks, ebooks, comics, and TV shows for free. Anyway, that is it for the show. Thank you, and remember to rate and review. It helps. And if you listen on Apple Podcasts, make sure you are following us. Visit us on social media at HDTGM, and for commercial free access to How Did This Get Made, and our entire archive, and so much more, sign up for Stitcher Premium for a free one-month trial using the code BONKERS. A big thank you to our producers Scott Sonny and Molly Reynolds, and our movie-picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineer, Alex Gonzalez, and our publisher, July Diaz. We will see you next week for The Specialist, but before we go, we thought we'd share a bonus deleted scene from our ambulance episode. So check it out. I had a friend who worked on a movie, and all he said you was had that, a like, friend who worked on a movie? On the Michael Bay movie. Sorry. Uh... <laughs> Sav- Savage flex here. No, really. Wow. Sorry, guys. I had a friend who worked on can a you Michael get me an au- Bay movie. <laughs> can you get me an audition? <laughs> 
I, I, well, I'll talk to him. We'll see. Um, my friend who worked in a Michael Bay movie told me this story that they were shooting a scene. They had their script. They had, and he goes, I can't use his name. I'll just say like Smith. He was like, it's not Will Smith. Uh, he, said, <laughs> he goes, Smith, heard you're funny. Not funny now. Be funny. And that's how he was directing him in the scene. Like, and he was like, he didn't even have anything to be funny. He's like, be funny. Just screaming at him, be funny. Well, I mean, we all know that's what really will bring about the comedy. <laughs> Be okay. funny. Yes. That's the direction. Oh He's doing God. the script, which is not funny.